Hey folks, thanks for joining me for a quick walkthrough of how I keep my now 11,000 line Godot RPG project organized. This video will focus on my actual file system hierarchy in my project, all the way from my highest level folders to the way that I group individual scenes and their dependencies at the lowest level. We're gonna jump right in here, but as we walk through, please know that I'm not making a case for my way being the best way. This is really just meant to be informative if you're starting a new project or maybe reorganizing a long-standing one and need some inspiration for where to start. I will say that this system has worked very well for me. I've been in development with Dauphin for over four years at this point, and in that time I've never really had to make a big architectural change to the way that I'm organizing things. So if you find this helpful, let me know with the thumbs up or comments. If you like this type of content, I'd love to keep producing it and have more resources on the channel to give back to the Godot community. All right, starting at the top level of my resources folder here, I wanna mention two core tenets that really drive my organizational approach. The first is to group files and folders primarily by in-game function and then by file type. What I mean by that is, instead of having top level folders for things like scripts and scenes and materials, I instead opt for folders grouping by in-game functionality like entities, which holds my player and all of my organisms and other NPCs in my game, stages, which holds all of the areas and maps that the player can explore, and even my common folder, which holds functionality not specific to my game logic that I could easily steal for another project. I do definitely have folders grouped by asset type, but those live all the way at the bottom levels of my file hierarchy. For example, drilling all the way down into my organisms folder here, I have folders for my organism categories and the individual organisms within, and finally, the actual assets that describe that organism. Within each of these lowest level organism folders, I have a folder for art, data, which really just holds relevant resource types, sound, and of course the actual scene itself and its script. For me, this seems like a really natural way to organize at least a very large RPG project like Dauphin. What this means in practice is that if I want to create some new artwork or maybe a new behavior script for my sand crab, for example, I know exactly where all that's going to go within my entities and organisms folder. I'm not gonna have behaviors or artwork or other scripts kind of jumbled up with unrelated things. What that also means is that if I have any kind of defect related to my sand crab, I have a nice little place where I know I should be looking to solve that. The other core concept here for me is keeping a small amount of top level folders. This is probably more of a personal preference than anything, but I really do not like having clutter at the top level of my projects. So I try to create kind of the least common denominator of the buckets that I need to be able to organize everything in my game and have large trees of siblings be hidden at least one level down. All right, for the bulk of this video, I wanna walk through my most important top and maybe second level folders to show what I think would be the most helpful to someone organizing their own project. So we'll start at the top with my assets folder. At first glance, you might think to find art and sound assets in here, but again, these are grouped at the bottom level with the individual scenes that depend on them. Here at the top, we have so far a very small collection of assets that really permeate throughout the game. So audio currently holds Dauphin's meager two track soundtrack. Credits is just a file to keep track of Patreon supporters. And I have a folder for the fonts I've been playing with in various UI elements. Nothing too crazy here. My common folder is where things start to get interesting. As I mentioned before, common is meant to hold functionality and tools that are not specific to Dauphin, quite literally meaning that they have no references to or dependencies on anything with Dauphin-specific game logic. In most cases, they are actually totally standalone. Examples here are my interface scaler, which holds onto code to provide different resolution options for Dauphin or really any other pixel art game, my state machine system, general purpose shaders, and a flexible in-game time tracking system that I may want to use elsewhere. I think a common folder like this is totally optional, but I really like having it because it acts as a reminder for me to think about designing more abstract and flexible systems that could be reusable and have a home in this folder and other projects as well. Next up is a quick one with my almost empty config folder. I don't expect I'll ever have a lot in here, but I do need a place to store essentially what will show up in the options menu in-game for the player. 
volume for various audio buses, resolution controls, gameplay tweaks, all that kind of stuff. This didn't really fit anywhere else, so it lives here for now. Now onto the good stuff with my Entities folder, which is without a doubt the largest folder in Dolphin's hierarchy. For better or worse, there is a lot that lives in here, really anything that can appear within the game world. As we talked about, that includes things like the player and NPCs, but also things like weather effects, Dolphin's base building system, and nodes associated with different player skills, such as climbing routes, mining and gathering nodes, and crafting stations. Looking at this folder now, I think it's probably safe to say that any time I create an implementation for something that the player can interact with, it's going to end up in the Entities folder. And there's obviously like a ton of subfolders in there, but I think that's okay. Dauphin is meant to be an RPG with a lot to see and a lot to do, so it's going to have to go somewhere. While we're in here, I'd like to show you an example of how I organize inheritance within my project, and I think my Items folder, which holds all of Dauphin's items, will be a good place to look. Right within the top level of my items folder, I have a script, item.gd. This script holds everything that is absolutely necessary to describe really any item in Dauphin. That said, given that Dauphin is an RPG, I probably want to have different item subtypes. So my pattern here is to have base type definitions at the top level, which is my item.gd script, and create sibling folders for my subtypes. So as an example, let's open up tools. Tools employs this same structure. I have a tool item.gd script with the very intentional item suffix in the name to tell me at a glance that this is extending my item class. I have folders, again, within tools like foraging, which contains a foraging tool item.gd script, which as you can probably guess, extends tool items. And you can see from the folder names what I'm actually building into the game here. We have items, tools, foraging tools, and at the bottom, my actual implementations for axes and pickaxes. This is a pattern that I have been very happy with throughout Dauphin's development. One last thing I'll call out while we're looking at entities is my UI folder. I sometimes second guess my decision to put this within my entities bucket, but these really are elements that live as nodes in the scene tree that the player can interact with. All of Dauphin's core UI lives here. The field notes, the crafting and fishing interfaces, the player HUD, and more. This probably could live as its own top level folder. All right, we survived entities onto localization. Very straightforward here, just a place to hold localized text for Dauphin. This is not something I've actually started on yet, but it is important to me that this be easy to maintain so it has a home at the top. Next up is Stages, which is probably Dauphin's second largest directory. Stages holds definitions and implementations for all the different areas that the player can explore in the game. For Dauphin, these consist of islands, caves, underwater dive sites, the open ocean, interiors for different buildings and sailboats, and probably more than that in the future. Maybe the best way to think about entities versus stages as I have them set up would be that entities are often siblings to the player in the scene tree, whereas stages are the parent in which the player lives. Most of what we really find in stages here are tile map implementations, either handmade or procedural. For that reason, I felt that this was a good home for my tile sets folder, which contains tile set resources that are often reused across different stage types. For example, the water, both on the islands and in the open ocean. And finally, we have my utilities folder, which to be honest is kind of a grab bag of stuff, but it's meant to be the home for helper logic that's going on behind the scenes in Dauphin. Good examples would be my game manager class responsible for loading and saving the game, my global signals class, which acts as a kind of global signal bus, and my scene manager, which holds all the logic for managing scene transitions and caching in Dauphin. It's probably worth noting that many of the classes in here, especially the ones with the manager suffix in their name, live as autoload singletons, managing some part of the game in the background at all times. At a high level, that's the gist of how Dauphin has been organized throughout its lifetime in development. If you could take away one thing from this video, I would call back to those core concepts at the start. It has worked so well for me to first organize by functionality in game at the high level and then by asset type at the low level. If you stick to that pattern and are also mindful about the number of folders that you create so that you're not just creating a bunch of clutter, I think you'll be in really good shape. 
I hope you found this video useful. Of course, please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something in more detail since we kept this very high level today, or if you just like this type of content on the channel. No matter what, I'll certainly see y'all soon for another Dolphin devlog. Until then.